Okay. We are coming on in the room. We had to switch from the YouTube tonight and we are over here on the Facebook. What's going on, Philip? Let me know if you can hear me or not. Cause we done rigged this up. So let me know if you can hear me. Let me know. If you can't hear me, tell me you can't hear me in the comment section. You can hear me? Good. I don't know if it's going to be a delay or not, but um, we're going to have to do what we got to do because I don't know what's going on. Y'all still here? Okay, okay. Now it's telling me that y'all can't see me. I don't know how that's possible. But if you can't see me, let me know. And we'll figure that out too. These, 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 uh, technologies are quite weird. Y'all can still see me? Okay, well, I can't see myself, but, you know, eh, neither here nor there. We're going to press on, even though I technically can't see me. Anywho. Okay, we switched over from YouTube tonight, y'all. We're going to do what we have to do. But, um, I don't know how many people had a chance earlier today to look at some of the posts that I made. Um, in reference to compatibility when dating. And I kind of asked a shallow question to start with. And basically, I wanted to know, you know, if, if we all kind of were on the same page with what we thought were our own ideals of what we use to determine if somebody's compatible, right? So my post said, uh, what matters to you the most? Basically, when you're evaluating whether somebody has potential for you to date them, seriously. And I picked like four of the main things that we technically don't want to admit that we look at uh, when we're trying to de truly determine if we're going to date somebody or give them our number or continue talking to, them, to continue talking to them past the second or third day. But the four things that I put on the list for people to choose from was um, zodiac sign compatibility, sexual intimacy compatibility, principles slash moral compass or integrity compatibility, and physical attraction. Now, I did kind of set you all up. So after I posted that particular question and let you all kind of choose what it was that uh, you all said was most important based on what you had to choose from, I posted a link or posted a video to a clip um, that S Spirit um, was on a show. This is, see, you say you need them all. See what I'm saying? But Spirit was on um, a particular show, the, I forgot what show it was, but she was on the um, Mel Robbins show. There you go. And she gave a nice, clean, broken down so it could forever be broken um, explanation of, you know, people choosing people that are not compatible with them or it's a one way compatibility and all the other kind of stuff. But before we get into what Spirit said, because we know that's kind of like the right stuff we're supposed to be using and thinking consciously of when we're trying to date somebody, we don't, we don't really do that, you know, and I'm perfectly okay with the fact that we don't, uh, we don't really use that criteria because I don't think a lot of people understood it or knew that. I mean, in the back of my mind, I knew that those were the type of compatibilities that we should have or I should have with someone, but being able to explain it the way she explained it, of course, no. So really quick, um, of those four things that I named, number three 
was the one that most people said that out of those four things, that was, you know, pretty much the most important thing for them. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not saying I don't believe y'all, okay? I'm not saying I don't believe you. When you say that a person's moral compass, integrity, and uh, their principles are what's, what's most important to you. But my God, I feel like it should be a lot more number fours, which is physical attraction. Now, they may not have to be what's perfect for you. They may not be perfect. They may not be your dream physique or all of that kind of stuff. But I mean, in the world of online dating, I mean, half the people don't even put a bio. So if they're not putting a bio, what, what other criteria are you going on before you even swipe? You know, you might have 50, 60 candidates come up on Tinder, but you're only swiping right, at least on the ones that you find attractive. So I don't think we're being all the way honest with ourselves. Take it. And I don't know if you guys can still hear me and see me or not. Let me know because it disappeared off my screen. So I, I have no idea whether you guys can actually hear me and see me. And there's probably a delay. So let me know. And actually, I'm going to watch myself live from my, um, from my tablet to see if y'all can see what I see. Even though I technically can't see. Okay, there we go. I'm still there. Great. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if y'all keeping it real with me. I don't know if y'all being honest about the physical attraction thing and the Zodiac thing, because I can stay on Facebook, let's say for an hour and at least 40% of the posts that I see are about Zodiac signs. And I'm going to be real honest. You know, there's a particular Zodiac sign out here that if I met sis right now in the grocery store and everything looked good about her, I would already have a semi wall up. If she told me she was that particular zodiac sign, I I just I just can't I can't do it, I can't do it, you know. But I mean I'm I'm willing to not uh, block my blessings, but in the back of my mind I already have some preconceived notions about her. I'm sorry, I just do. That's just kind of what it is. Um, but yeah. So speaking to number three that everybody chose a lot of. Um, it's just very weird because when I talk to a lot of people and, you know, nobody wants to talk about like why it didn't work out or whatever. But a lot of the times if someone does want to talk to you about like what really happened in that relationship and why it didn't work, like one of the first things I hear is that there was a disagreement on basic principles and morals. But I mean, are people not talking about this kind of stuff? Like, when you guys first meet, like what, what is the threshold? Um, you know, what is the threshold of time before you all should be talking about some of the deep things that determine whether you guys are compatible or not? So since everybody chose number three, um, I mean, when do you start? What, what, what type of conversations are you having? How are you even starting these conversations out? You know, like, are you all actually having in-depth conversations or are you guys just attracted to each other and start coming to each other's house and start chilling or going on dates? I mean, are you not willing to have phone conversations? Are you the type of person who just immediately wants to start like dating? I know my word. Um, you're not going to sit on my phone all day, sir, ma'am, and you need to take me somewhere so we can get to know each other. I mean, I guess you know, it just depends on you. Me personally, I'm going to be honest. Um, the first thing is going to always be physical attraction. And I'm not saying that this is what determines whether or not um, a person has potential with me. But, I mean, let's face it. You see somebody and you're attracted to them. If it was somebody who came up to me and asked me for my number and I wasn't attracted to them, sis, miss, sis, ma'am, you're not, you're not getting my phone number. I've only been tricked like that one time at a bowling alley. But other than that, no. If, if I'm not attracted to you, why would I give you my number? And, and, and again, that's because if the initial approach is for you to shoot your shot and I don't know you, then yeah, we'll be like, no, I'm good. But 
if I know you, let's say I used to work with you or I knew you from a long time ago or, you know, whatever, I, we have mutual friends and it just so happens that, you know, maybe to me you weren't, I guess, my type. I don't really have a type, to be honest with you. But maybe I didn't have those type of intentions with you. I was like, you know, she's cool. We playing spades. You know, she's just somebody at the kickback. Um, and I didn't really have any intent on trying to date you or talk to you or get your phone number. And it's not that I maybe didn't find you attractive. It's just that I don't necessarily try to talk to every woman that I find attractive, to be honest, especially if they are feminine presenting, because you just don't know, you know, who's on the home team or not. So typically most women will approach me because I just, I, I kind of don't approach women unless we're in an environment where literally everybody is gay or they're expected to be gay. So, I mean, that's why I say sometimes we, we're kind of kidding ourselves about the whole physical attraction being important or not being important. I mean, typically if you are going to approach somebody, you're looking at their physical attraction, but let's go past that. So let's say, you know, I get somebody's number or they get mine. I'm the type of person where after we finish, you know, flirting and, you know, how was your day and all that other kind of stuff, like, I'm, I'm pretty much going into some, some real conversations in the first week. So, you know, the first couple of days, it might be a little hit or miss because we're busy, but we want to stay connected. Or, you know, we're on the phone, what you watching? Oh, I love that show. What other shows you watch? It might be some shallow stuff like that for maybe the first couple of days. But if not by the third, definitely the fourth day, we're going to be texting while we're at work, if that's possible. And we're going to be communicating throughout the day while we're trying to get to know each other. And I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, so whether we're on the phone or we're texting, I'm going to pretty much start diving into, you know, how you were raised, what's your family dynamics, um, you know, how do you feel about certain subject matter, you know, whether it's Black Lives Matter, whether it's eating Chick-fil-A. And any girl I've dated in the past two years will tell you, I, we have definitely had a conversation about eating Chick-fil-A. It just is what it is. But, I mean, I feel like you need to get into those type of conversations early on. Not saying y'all trying to be in a relationship the next week. But it's just certain things I need to know early on so I'm not wasting my time. Um, if you have a certain type of mentality, it's going to turn me off completely. If you don't have integrity, that's going to turn me off completely. If I know you steal and you don't mind stealing and all that other foolishness, that's going to turn me off. Um, how you handle certain situations will turn me completely the fuck off. So I'm just saying, uh, yeah. So I ask certain questions up front. So we will get past that part of it because, you know, everybody said, you know, it was morals and integrity that, you know, they use to determine whether they're going to date someone and whatnot. However, yeah, I'm sorry. I know y'all been trying to join YouTube. We had to cut that off right there. We had to, we had to cut that off. And I'm just not scrolling through the, uh, the comments and all that good stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it up. But um, I want to get into what Spirit said. Um, because basically, if you haven't watched that clip on Instagram, um, Spirit was basically saying that people don't work out in relationships because they're not compatible. And she basically said the root of compatibility is intimacy. And intimacy is basically built on rising. So she described pretty much the compatibility um, into different categories. And she said that, you know, couples either rise or they fall. So she uses the acronym RISES, and it's recreational intimacy, intellectual intimacy, spiritual intimacy, emotional intimacy and sexual intimacy. Now, it's like you kind of know these things, but you don't know them. So let's say recreational intimacy. People will ask me all the time, like, you know, what's your range for dating? And the older I get, my God, the older I get, uh, my, the, 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 the higher, the lower end of the age range that I'm willing to date, the higher that gets. Because I'm sorry, I don't know, I don't know who raised these 25 to 30 year olds. I don't know. 
But I just feel like in my spirit that they, they just are not the same type of people that me and my cohort are. Like, I, even a woman who's like 28, 29, I just feel like I was not that way at 28, 29. However, um, you know, so I feel as though we should be compatible with recreational intimacy, but then again, it may not be. So, um, or it may not be that way. So if you have somebody who's very active, you know, they like to hike, you know, jog every, jog every day and, uh, you know, skydive, shit, do yoga every day. They may not be for me. They may not be for me. I mean, because in my spirit, I don't care what you do in your free time. You know what I'm saying? Just don't make me do nothing I don't want to do in my free time. Okay? So if you want to go hiking, you know, you can go hiking. I will be just fine sitting at home watching YouTube videos or building something or putting something together or, you know, researching something, uh, watching a movie. Because that's really just not my thing. Now, I'm not saying I can't compromise and I'm not willing to try things. Oh, I absolutely am. I'm willing to try anything with somebody I'm dating. Uh, well, shit, not, not, not anything. We're talking about recreational intimacy. So, um, I mean, I don't have to be, I don't feel like I need to be into someone's hobbies and they don't necessarily need to be into my hobbies. But I don't think uh, it's going to work like that for everybody. So, you know, if you're very active, you like to go out, you like to party, or you don't want to party necessarily, but you like to be active. You like to stay going to the grocery store and the Walmart and the Marshalls and, you know, whatever. Or if you're the type of person where you love the arts. So every concert that comes into town, you want to go. You want to watch the live acts. You want to go to the city winery concerts. Every week you're trying to go to a concert, you know, or you're the type of person who likes sports events and being outside. Um, to a certain extent, you all don't have to be the same, basically, but you all need to have similar recreational interests. Because if not, you know, that person isn't a part of your life in that aspect, and it may not be, you know, it, basically it, it may not work out in that particular area, right? So he says, as long as you don't get jealous when they do their hobbies with their friends and without you. I agree 100%, you know, but I guess to a certain extent, it's going to get to a point where, you know, Let's say, for example, I used to smoke a lot of cigars. And while I didn't necessarily want whoever I was dating or in a relationship with to come with me all the time, um, if one of my buddies from the lounge was having an event, you know, it's like bring your girl with you, you know, every now and then I might want you to come with me, you know. Now, if you got asthma or some shit, you know, I'm not bothering you, sis, but I'm just saying. I, I could understand how not having the same recreational uh, interest or having recreational intimacy can possibly be an issue. Um, I actually think that the last little tenderoni I was dating, that might have actually have been one of our issues because she was much younger and, you know, she want to be live. She want to be all the way live. She want to go to the club. She always got to do something. Quarantine was killing her. She could not sit the fuck still. And I was just over here chilling, chilling with, with water in my Yeti. Me and Pepe just sitting on the couch. I was bothered not one bit. But her personality when it came to recreational stuff was completely different. Another young lady I dated last year, same thing. Uh, you know, she wants to chill with her, with her coworkers after work. You know, baby, I'm not, I'm not the, that kind of person. You know, I don't, I don't want to go hang out with my coworkers after work necessarily. So, you know, but they were younger. They were at least six to seven years younger than me. And apparently that, I guess that made a difference. So... Um, one of them came home and was like, me and my coworkers going to the strip club. And I was like, I'm good, ma'am. And she got pretty upset. She was, she was very upset because I didn't want to go. And I was like, I, I just don't want to go. Okay. So who knows? That could be an issue. Um, intellectual intimacy. <laughs> Man. I just, intellectual intimacy. I don't want to sound like a snob, right? I know I'm an intelligent ass motherfucker. I know I am. I know a little bit about a lot of shit and certain things I know a lot of stuff about. And I think that if you want to be engaged and knowledgeable about certain things, I mean, you have to be willing to learn about different things. 
And there's some people who are really trapped inside of a bubble. You know, they only want to know about what they know about. They only want to know about what, you know, the things they've been through. They, they're not willing to learn. They're just not interested. And some people actually are just not. I mean, they're just not all that intelligent, to be honest. And I do think there's a difference between um, people who are intelligent but can't articulate it versus someone who truly is just not cultured or, and I won't say they're not intelligent, but they're not cultured. They can't have in-depth conversations. Um, it doesn't matter where you fall on the spectrum. I think it's going to be very important, as Spirit said, that you all are on the same level of intelligent, uh, uh, intellectual intimacy. Because I've seen too many times someone is dating somebody, they bring them around, you know, the crew or the circle, um, and that person feels some type of way. You know, they can't keep up with conversation. You know, and I'm not talking about, you know, we only know about bourbon, so you don't know anything about bourbon, so you can't engage in the conversation. But it could be about a lot of different things, and they just, they don't, they can't engage. They, they, they just can't. And I would hate to be that person. Um, and a part of that, you know, you see some people, they just say, you know, I just don't think I'm going for you because, you know, you're really smart and all that other kind of stuff. And I don't know nothing about that. And I don't think people actually say that. I've seen people where they won't say that they feel stupid around you. But what they'll do is, is they'll just be like, well, you know, you're condescending to me or you're this or you're that. Because when you're trying to have a conversation with them, they think you're using too many big words. Um, you know, they just speak how they feel. They don't have any facts. They can't give you any data. You know, it's like they can't, they don't have anything to back up anything. And where I've seen that come into, a, come into play the most is when you guys are having a disagreement about something. Um, I think people who are not confident, confident in their intellect uh, typically feel lesser than when you guys are having some type of argument. You could never in your life say, like, I'm smarter than you. I have more degrees than you. I'm more educated. You don't have to say anything like that. You don't have to ever put down their career goals or their achievements. You don't have to ever bring up anything like that. But I think a person who knows that you all don't have the same intellectual intimacy sometimes can feel as though, you know, they're, they're not enough or they lack confidence sometimes. And we already know if somebody lacks self-confidence, like that, that shit ruins like the relationship. So if you guys have any experience with this or any views on the intellectual intimacy part, go ahead and comment and let me know. Um, the next thing she talked about was spiritual, spiritual intimacy. Um, this is deeper than religion. This is not necessarily about religion from my understanding. You don't have to share in the same religion, but spiritually, you know what I'm saying? Spiritually, um, do you all, are you all similar? You know, um, you meet somebody say, I don't believe in God, you know, humans are shit and we came from dirt and God ain't did nothing for me. And you know, it's just, you probably not going to work out with someone who's heavily spiritual, um, who believes in something or some type of, um, way of life or, you know, I, I just don't, I don't necessarily see how that's going to work out. And when it comes to religion, I have a, <laughs> I always get that question um, from people because of the whole Chick-fil-A thing. And, you know, the first thing, you know, a girl say, oh, I'm finna head to Chick-fil-A and grab me something real quick. I say, well, this household does not support Chick-fil-A. And then they, that's usually what uh, pivots us into a conversation about religion and spirituality. And they go, oh, okay, so you gay, you don't believe um, in Christianity. And I say, no, I have other reasons why I don't necessarily consider myself to be a Christian. I say, but I feel as though um, human beings need to believe in something. They need to have hope and faith in something. So I don't knock anybody's religion. Um, however, I believe in being a good human. You know, I believe in... Um, Treating, treating people right. I believe in karma. I believe in a lot of things and I do believe in God. But um, for some people not believing in Christianity because I have not dated any women that were Muslim, uh, Buddhist or any of that other kind of stuff. I only have experience with dating women who say they're Christians. Um, technically, I'm okay if that's what they believe in and they say they're okay with what I believe in. 
But if they are the type of woman who wants to have children, that is usually where we butt heads. Because I think that even though spirituality is, is, is different from just religion, um, that always comes up in it, though. And if we're having children and we're raising children, I'm not going to be okay with you teaching certain things to our children that I don't believe in. And I'm sure vice versa for them, um, even though, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not taking a, a, a Bible or anything like that to them. I'm teaching them about how the way the world works and how to be a good person and having integrity and morals and all those other kind of things. Um, I do believe in God, like I said, so, you know, I don't think just happen. I think things happen for a reason. Um, I think you have to put in work. I believe in prayer. I believe in a lot of things, but it's some stuff I'm not going to be okay with you teaching my kids. And I don't think I could ever date a person who did not believe in a higher power. Because I feel as though um, being spiritual and believing in a higher power, at least for me, uh, brings humility in to a person. It makes them humble. Uh, it keeps a balance in you knowing that you are not the, the end all say all that you don't have that kind of power and that, you know, you can be touched basically, um, that karma does come back around. So I don't think I could believe in someone who just flat out didn't believe in God. And I mean, I could listen to the, you know, why they believe that, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think I could, I don't think I could believe in someone that wasn't uh, spiritual in any type of way. Okay, so emotional intimacy. Whew. If I have any exes that ever watch this, or who, if they could come on here right now, they'd be like, <laughs> when it comes to emotions, so I'm a Pisces, right? I'm a Pisces, and people say my sign is very emotional. But I try to explain to them that I'm a mixture of my mom and my dad, and my dad is straight up OG nonchalant and I have feelings and I will express my feelings to you however um I cannot live and bask in my emotions forever and I have had to learn over the years how to be more sensitive um how to listen to people um how to you know, all those little things that you just learn, whether it's through therapy, whether it's through dating different people and them teaching you certain things or, you know, through mistakes that you've made, uh, allowing people to have a safe space to talk to you, um, listening so that you can listen and not respond, being open and making yourself emotionally available and vulnerable to people. And I feel as though, you know, if you have someone who's just not very emotional, emotionally available, vulnerable, um, and you are, I don't, I can't honestly say, I, I think that's going to work. Um, you know, I, I don't know about that. Some people say it works out just fine, but um, I feel like you guys have to be on the same uh, levels of emotional depth and, you know, to a certain extent. I can't see somebody who is very emotional and very just kumbaya and very vulnerable and they don't get some level of that from their partner and it actually works. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I, I don't think that that will work. Um, I have seen it not work, at least in some relationships or situationships that I've tried. Um, and again, while I've softened up a little bit over the years, I just, it's just certain things that drive me crazy. Um, and that's how I know, like, me and a person is not compatible. So, I mean, yeah. uh, gosh, that's not a good example, but I was going to give you an example. So, just in general, let me just say this, right? Let's say you have someone who uh, has an a illness. Let's say, we're going to say diabetes or we're going to say something else where, you know, what they drink and what they eat affects their physical, you know, their physical health. And, you know, of course, if you're not okay physically, Mentally and emotionally, you're probably not going to be okay either, you know, whether that's in pain or you're going through something. So um, I dated somebody who had a physical condition, and if they did not eat properly, they would, like, get sick. And I remember one night, you know, she was in there throwing up, but I knew why she was throwing up because I had told her or I had asked her, like, should you be eating that? And she just kind of dismissed me and was like, I mean, I'm fine, I'm good, mind your business, whatever. 
But then that night, like, you know, she was in there chugging it up in the bathroom. And I did not get the fuck up. Like, I, I laid in the bed and turned on a movie and mind my business. And she came and got in the bed when she fiz finished throwing up. And she was very upset with me. Like, she was mad. She, she was talking and started crying. She was mad. She's like, you told me in there. And you ain't even going to come and hold my hair or nothing. And I was like, listen, earlier today, I saw what you were doing. I brought it to your attention. And I told you that, you know, you, you're not going to be okay. So you probably shouldn't be doing that. And she just dismissed me. And I was like, you know, if this was another thing, if this was something else, I mean, absolutely. You know, I would be, I would be standing right at the toilet with you. I said, but I'm not going to coddle you. And I'm not going to um, get up out the bed. I'm tired just like you're tired. You know what you're doing and you do this all the time. So I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. And she, she was mad for it. She was, she was kind of mad for her. Like she was mad, mad. And I mean, some people would say that's very insensitive. You see, you know what she was doing was wrong, but you still should have been there to support her. And I'm just like, nah, nah, mm -mm. I mean, to me, that's no different. If I'm dating somebody, I know they sell drugs, you get arrested, so I'm not bailing you out. <laughs> You're gonna have to sit. I don't know. So people will say that I'm mean or brash or whatever, cold, cold hearted. But um, I mean, sometimes when people are very overly emotional, and I'm trying to get to why, what is going on and why are you so emotional? They tell me I'm just, I'm overthinking it. I shouldn't be thinking about any of that. It doesn't matter why I feel the way I feel. You should just be emotional with me right now. Me and that type of person, we're not going to work. Sorry. Okay. And the last one is sexual intimacy. Whew. Do you guys honestly think, um, it can work between two people who don't share the same level and types of sexual intimacy. I mean, you have someone who loves to make love every night, or even if it's twice a week, they want to make love. We talking about the candles and the music and the, you know, the incense and all that. They want the whole shebang. You know what I'm saying? They want the whole setup. They want strawberries and shit and whipped cream. Like they want an experience. You know, they want the total experience that's gonna last like three hours every time you all engage, you know, and then when they finish, they wanna pillow talk and rub your chest and all that there. And the other person <laughs> is kinda like, look, I had a rough day today. I just need to go ahead and get it, get get mine quick and give you yours quick, and we need to go about our business. Um, I don't feel like anybody can be one of those ways all the time, but I do feel like you guys have to be sexually compatible. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't date somebody who doesn't like having sex. I know women who don't really care to have sex. I don't know what may have happened to them. I don't know if that's something that they need to work through. I don't know if that's something they actually need to work through, but no, I don't have to hunt you every day. Listen, ma'am, but no, I could not be with someone who is struggling with their with, with with their sensual and sexual side and you know I couldn't do it. Um I know a lot of women who have been very open about you know the fact that they feel either their husbands or whoever they're with is just not they don't have the same, you know, libido whatever you want to call it, they don't have that together. They don't share the same level of um sexual intimacy. And they try, and some will say I cheat because I couldn't do it. I, I don't believe in cheating on people either, so I would not cheat. Um, said to me more like that. I'm glad I've never dated one. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't see it working. Um, I think that you know you can make love, but you ain't got to make love every time. I don't want to make. I don't want to. Sometimes you just want to. You know, you just want to get her done. Okay. And sometimes you can make love, but it ain't going to be pretty. It, it ain't going to be pretty that night. That night is not pretty make love time, okay? That is put on some rap music, make love time. And I don't believe in, like, being boring. I don't, uh, I don't like being boring. I don't like a woman who never wants to initiate. Um, I, I think I found that out recently that that really bothers me. Um, a woman who is not, you know, at all interested or doesn't feel comfortable, like you want to have sex real bad, but you, and I'm just chilling, and I'm just sitting and chilling, and you just don't want to initiate, 
Or you don't know how. You be like, come on, let's go fuck. And I'm like, my God, you don't know how to say that better than that. You don't know how to be romantic. You don't know how to get me in the room without just saying it. I think that kind of turns me off. I don't like it. So those are the categories um, of compatibility that Spirit talked about. Um, and I don't think that we honestly take those into consideration for various reasons. I think it depends on your age. I think it depends on your experiences that you've been through. Um, and I think that is a reason, the reason why a lot of us struggle. And one example of incompatibility that she gave um, was like, you know, if one person is a square and the other person is a circle, especially when it's one way compatibility, you know, the circle fits inside of the square. So everything the circle wants to have fulfilled is getting fulfilled by that person. But then you have the edges of the square and they're still in need. They're not full. They're not complete. So they always feel like something is missing. Um, so flat out, just not even taking into consideration the different levels and, and various um, types of intimacy that lead to being compatible. I mean, sometimes we just make some poor ass decisions, man. We really do make some just poor decisions. Um, she also talked about wound mates, meaning you know, you're just so used to going through the same cycle. You're not ready to change. You're not ready to try something different. You're scared, the anxiety of doing something different. So you find you a woman. You find you somebody who all they're going to do is accept you as you are and just keep triggering you over and over, and y'all just go through these horrible cycles. And I can't even tell you how many times I've done that with people. So that's why, you know, I'm at a point right now. I mean, we're always still growing and learning about this kind of stuff. But... It, I mean, it doesn't have to be ghosting. I'm willing to have a conversation, but I will ghost your ass too. But I just don't, I just let it go. End game. Game over. Um, if I see too many red flags or I truly know that we are not compatible, I mean, why keep trying? Why keep getting to the point where now you guys don't like each other because you're driving each other crazy and you're forcing something that doesn't fit? So I don't know. I, I don't know. So y'all let me know. Do y'all really truly um, think you have been in situations um, where you've been forcing things that just don't fit? You're not compatible. You waited too late to figure out if you all were compatible or not. Um, and you're kind of just to a point now where it's like, well, I'm already in it and I love them. I'm in love. So no, we're not compatible, but you know, we're going to try. Um, and she also mentioned that some people have to work really hard to be compatible and some people it just flows. You know, it just flows. Y'all compatible. Like, y'all y'all vibe on, on all the levels. Now, it may be some other things that uh, you all may not, you know, you, it may be some other things going on between you guys or personally um, that throws a wedge into your relationship. But for the most part, you may be compatible. Um, but, yeah. So I think it was important. I, I think it was very important to talk about compatibility because... People try to compromise on non-negotiables. And I guess we're kind of leading into that side of things. But certain things, you need to know what are your non-negotiables when you're dating somebody or when you're looking for somebody or what you want out of a relationship. That doesn't mean you can't compromise. Um, every type of relationship is going to require some type of compromise. But if you have non-negotiables, you need to know what your non-negotiables are. And I have never seen anyone try to compromise on a non-negotiable and the relationship works. It's going to keep coming up. It's going to keep being a problem. You cannot compromise on your non-negotiables. So, you know, you all need to tell people what are your non-negotiables up front. Because some of them non-negotiables may bring out some of the things that are incompatible about you all. And where is my phone? Because uh, I'm going to give you guys the number. To call in, I don't know where I put the phone at, but I was going to give you guys a number so you guys can call in if you wanted to call in, since I don't know where my phone is right now, probably somewhere on the table. Um, if you want to call in, comment that you want to call in, because if not, I'm not going to go find my phone. Um, but uh, we, 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 we love to, to either not have boundaries or waver on those boundaries or ignore those red flags uh, when it comes to compatibility. And... I don't know if it's because we're lonely, we want companionship. Um, and sometimes, to be honest, 
you feel like you're sticking to your guns and you know you got your boundaries and you know you're not going to do this no more you're not going to go through this anymore there's certain things you're not willing to do and you've been like that for a considerable amount of time but you you're ready to allow someone in um so you feel like well shit i've been single for two three years now um maybe i'm just being too you know rigid maybe i'm just being too black and white maybe i'm just not allowing um people to be themselves and seeing if it can work well maybe i should have gave this person a chance because you know most of the things i think we were compatible on um it was just two or three things we weren't compatible on and maybe it just could have worked out and you know whatever so you just kind of start just allowing yourself to be engaged with what that with whatever and whomever and i i don't i don't uh I'm not a professional, but I don't encourage that. I feel as though if you believe in prayer, you say your prayer, you ask for peace, you ask for healing, you ask for all those things, you ask to be the best version of yourself so that you are ready and available and capable when you do run across that person that is for you. Um, yeah, but you, you should not just rush for the sake of rushing. You know, you should not just allow anybody into your space, uh, what they call it, when you sleep with people and things, um, that, just, you know, a piece, a piece of your energy and spirit and all the spirit ties and all that, yeah, don't be inviting uh, <laughs> them unnecessary spirit ties because y'all done had a nice three-month fling and it was hot and heavy and now you done started falling and you knew that person was trash for you. Not that they were a trash person, but they were trash for you and you knew it. Uh, you're going to have to stay strong and steadfast, okay? Because, um, yeah, it, it, I think that over time, and I guess we're phasing into the end of this, I think over time, you know, I don't know if everybody's capable of doing it. I don't know. I think some people actually do get to a point where they're just tired. They're tired of all of the, the energy they're tired of all the connections. They're tired of starting over. You know, they're tired. You know, you ever be dating and you shit, you just get tired and you're like, fuck, I'm tired. Every time I meet somebody, I got to start off with what's your name, what's your number, what's your sign. And I'm just tired of doing that. I'm tired of having to be so patient. I'm tired, you know, I'm tired of, tired of getting to know people. And sometimes you get like that. So, you know, I think it's a good idea once you go through that also to take a break. Shit, take a break. You know, make sure you ain't still feeling old girl or old boy. Give yourself a break between people. Um, and I think that prepares us to have the patience and to be open and not have up walls and all that other kind of stuff. So that we can see clearly when we actually do meet someone new. So that, you know, we know, shit, that we are compatible. Hello? Um, but yeah, so compatibility is important. Uh, we have to stop ignoring these signs um, when we know we're not compatible with somebody. I don't care how good they look. I don't care how much money they have. We talked about finances on the last episode. Uh, it, none, none of it matters. None of it matters. If you guys are not compatible, I've seen people married to each other and they do not like each other. They don't like each other. They don't like talking to each other. They don't like the way they breathe when they sleep. Hello, they don't like the way they chew their food. They don't, they don't like anything about them. But, you know, apparently, I guess they love them. I don't know how that works. But they're not compatible at all. You know, they don't mesh on any level. But they look good together. Hello? Y'all look good together, so y'all y'all stay together. And that usually doesn't work, you know? So, but anywho, um, glad y'all came and hung out with me so we could talk about compatibility uh, as I said in the beginning, I think some of y'all lying, y'all saying that, you know, only principles and morals matter and when it, well, that matters the most when y'all progress, some of y'all lying, some of y'all know y'all dating thugs and, and gangs and everything else. And they'll go shoot up somebody and you know, whatever, but y'all be like, okay, that's my boo thing. Whatever. I'm not here to judge, but, uh, you know, I think that's good. It says, I think a big part of that, you grow out of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, guys, I enjoyed you. Um, if you all want to add, say if you don't, if you don't grow together, it's a wrap as well. Well, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I could see that. Um, I could also see where you're younger when you start a relationship, and 
You are not the same person at 20 or 21 that you may be at 35 or 40. Um, and I think that's where that compatibility part comes into. Um, some people change. What they like changes. What they want, it changes. Uh, what they desire changes. Um, I don't know. And I think that if you don't have someone where you all are compatible enough or as you all grow, you, your interests start to change and you grow apart. I mean, I don't think you should stay in those situations either. I don't care how long you've been married. I mean, if you all are no longer compatible, go be happy. I'm going to be happy regardless. I'm going to have my peace. I'm not going to be stressed. I'm not going through any more toxic cycles with anybody's daughter. So, yeah. And um, before I leave, don't, don't be shy about saying and revealing who you are. Because that's something she talked about, wearing a mask. You know, you really want nurturing and softness and ooey gooey, but you wear a mask and you act so hard all the time um, and you don't express that vulnerability and no one gets to see that. So you basically are attracting people who want somebody that's rough and hard and they don't require that softness or vulnerability or whatever, what, what have you. That's who they're attracting uh, or that's who you're attracting because that's what you show. Um, I know it's scary and it's dangerous to be very vulnerable out here in these streets because some people are true opportunists and assholes and they're just looking for somebody to take advantage of. And I know that can be hard, but um, it is important to be who you are. Um, and you don't have to always let people in per se, but if you are talking to someone, there's nothing wrong with being truthful. You know, I love being nurtured. I don't know whether people know that or not, but if I'm actually talking to somebody, I don't mind telling them I, I value being nurtured. I value a lot of things. I value honesty. I value vulnerability. You know, I don't want to be emotional all day crying and, you know, watching Hallmark movies. Like, I don't want to do that, but I, I like knowing I have a deep connection with somebody and we're being honest with each other and we're being open and we're taking care of and we're nurturing. I, I want all of that. So, you know, I, I say that up front. I don't have a problem expressing that. Um, but to a certain extent, you know, hey, I'm good. Some people who are not good, you know, they require a lot of validation. They require a lot of push and emotional support and all those things. I mean, if that's who you are, you, you, need, to, you need to wear that. You need to be that. You need to be honest about that's who you are. Because uh, they said uh, you can't wear a mask, you know. So... To sum this up, mask off, be who you are, be true, live in your truth, be honest about what, you, what it is that you want and who you are and what you require, be honest about all that kind of stuff. You know, if, whether it's recreational intimacy, sexual intimacy, all of those things, don't put on and try to appease to somebody because you're just comfortable with that situation or you're just in love with being in love and in a relationship and you're not truly telling them who you are and what you want. Okay? So, all right, y'all, let's be compatible before we get married and have babies. I enjoyed y'all. We'll probably be back next Friday and we're going to see if we can get this YouTube going, okay? But I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Uh, if you're on YouTube, go subscribe to the beautiful Bo YouTube channel. Um, hopefully I can save this video and upload it there in case you missed it tonight. And also check out underscore the beautiful Bo, B-E-A-U on Instagram. And I'll holler at y'all.